Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who are your shells, desolate, search, pestles, pestles, minions? I'm a useful idiot. Welcome, and I want to talk about uh, Iraq. And it appears that uh, all the indicators seem to be lining up to show that U.S. ground troops will be in Iraq proper. Right now, we have uh, somewhat around uh, 800 U.S. troops in Erbil, Ir Erbil in Kurdistan which of course technically is part of Iraq, but now we're seeing lots of discussions of uh, a lot more U.S. troops going to Iraq, ground troops. And the latest one is a, a story that came out in Reuters, and supposedly the uh, a governor, Sunni governor of Ambar province, confirms a deal for U.S. presence, quote, very soon, unquote. In the interview with Reuters, uh, confirms meetings with U.S. diplomats and sen senior military officials Securing a promise not only of airstrikes, but a military presence on the ground. The uh, governor of, of Ambar was quoted as saying, quote, No date was decided, but it will be very soon, and there will be a presence for the Americans in the western area, unquote. And uh, let's remember, this is a, a, an area, Ambar province, uh, that was a, a hotbed for resistance till the uh, Sunnis were won over, essentially by a system of bribery. And uh, they have since uh, been, of course, uh, persecuted and uh, marginalized by the, the government in Baghdad. And then, of course, now we have Fallujah and Ramadi and most of the Ambar province under the control of ISIS or the Islamic State since uh, all the way back in January. And um, so anyway, the governor went on to say, quote, I held several meetings with the American embassy and the U.S. commander and very soon there will be a joint coordination center in operations in Ambar that gave a promise, unquote. Of course, there's no confirmation of this from American sources yet, although we do have an announcement uh, earlier today or yesterday where U.S. officials say they are considering sending more troops to Iraq. What a strange coincidence. Uh, the article says that the U.S. is saying fewer than 300, but let's remember that uh, before when the United States sent more troops to Iraq. It started out as 150, then it became 200, then it became 300, then it became 500. Now we have 800 in a year bull. And um, these 300 are supposedly headed to Baghdad. And uh, we've, we've heard these kind of numbers thrown around before, like I say, but they're headed to Baghdad. And, and uh, the U.S. officials said that, uh, quote, extra security around Baghdad, unquote, would be provided. So that also gives an indication that U.S. combat troops will be on the ground in Iraq because it says extra security around Baghdad. They're not talking about advisors, not talking about trainers, they're not talking about private contractors. So uh, supposedly there's a uh, hundred U.S. troops in Baghdad now, so that would bring it up to a force of uh, 400 with 800 in Erbil. And that's uh, roughly um, 13, 1,400 U.S. troops. And then uh, another article appeared that uh, uh, seems to indicate that the U.S. is looking for more private contractors for Iraq, Iraq, and they're offering uh, 12 to 36 month contracts. And um, I haven't uh, found a whole lot of more details on that, and it could amount to nothing, but it is rather interesting that the U.S. is looking for uh, more private contractors, and certainly ones with more, uh, previous experience for Iraq, for uh, a long period of time. So it does look like the United States is planning for a, lo a longer engagement there for possibly the next several years. And then look at the last two weeks. We're now up to 85 airstrikes uh, supplied by the United States. So I can safely say that uh, um, the United States is back in a war with Iraq, and unlike the previous video I did where they were only working to defend the Kurds, now they are going to expand these operations apparently to include western Iraq and the Ambar province. We're talking about ground troops. We're talking about uh, ground troops used for extra security around Baghdad, and the airstrikes go up. And uh, this shouldn't be surprising in some ways. First of all, we have uh, the, the predictable Iraqi uh, Baghdad outcry, how come you can help the Kurds but you won't help the Iraqi government more? So they have to rectify that. 
then they've also found that the because the very effective propaganda campaign about saving refugees and humanitarian relief and then protecting uh, U.S. personnel in Kurdistan, uh, this was used to reintroduce the United States back into Iraq. And apparently it's working because uh, uh, the American public seems to be in favor of these uh, airstrikes. And as usual, they will just massage the public and con continue these uh, propaganda events like the, uh, the refugees and now the uh, Foley uh, execution. Uh, all of these things go to pile up and uh, you will notice a dramatic increase in the rhetoric and the intensity of the rhetoric and the intentions of the U.S. and we're, we're seeing that already with Obama announcing that we will be relentless against ISIS. So all of a sudden it has become a big deal and this will continue to escalate and amp up until we see a, a lot a larger uh, U.S. presence and in fact uh, this seems to be part of the plan uh, to have this ISIS event unfold, uh, unfold between Iraq and Syria and then the United States uh, foreign policy can kill two birds with one stone and get justification uh, for a, a broader war, a broader uh, effort against ISIS across that entire region and that will help redraw the borders of the region um, break up uh, Israel's uh, adversaries in the region uh, and redraw the, redraw the map of the Middle East as we've discussed many times before in other videos. And another part of, the, another, uh, part of this, uh, talking about the United States looking for more private contractors in Iraq, Iraq is that uh, in spite of previous controversy, Blackwater apparently is still operating in Baghdad and Iraq. And uh, not only that, there's an article from the Wall Street Journal uh, from back in February 2014 that talks about there's 5,000 private contractors that were pr previously on the United States Defense Department payroll who are now on the payroll of the Iraqi government. And uh, companies like Triple Canopy and Dyne, DynCor uh, International, who we uh, all know are uh, international mercenary companies, uh, still have multi-billion contracts in Iraq for years to come. So. Uh, these companies are making a fortune in Iraq uh, now that Iraq government has to pay them directly so they're no longer on the United States payroll and uh, they feel free to uh, offer their service to the Iraqi government probably at uh, an expanded uh, rate, uh, an uh, inflated rate. Um, as of January 2014 theoretically there's 12,500 US contractors in Iraq and a lot of those definitely are civilian contractors uh, working to support systems that the United States sends over to Iraq, but uh, we really have no way of knowing. And it's hard to say uh, if we have companies like Triple Canopy and uh, um, Academy, formerly Blackwater, and Dyncor International working there. Uh, we have a, a lot of security and mercenary forces there, and we really have no way of knowing how many. But um, in some ways, certainly we can consider that a U.S. Uh, presence in Iraq as well. And then if anybody has any doubts about the uh, the reality of these private contractors and they're supposedly uh, banned from uh, being mercenaries per se and are not allowed to be civilians in combat technically, uh, it turns out that a, a document surfaced uh, from one of these private contract groups, a PowerPoint uh, presentation uh, about uh, private contractors in Afghanistan and the guidelines and it was uh, the the topics were expeditionary warfare, irregular warfare, special operations and stabilization and reconstruction operations so it pretty much sounds like mercenaries to me and the company even admitted that uh, this was a uh, authentic PowerPoint uh, presentation so these, these contractors are definitely mercenaries so so there we have a big picture we have a number of things adding up now that the United States present will, presence in Iraq will uh, expand and, uh, and that they're uh, already drawing up plans for the long haul. The propaganda war is in place and in full gear and uh, we apparently have some sort of promise of a U.S. military presence now in Ambar and uh, of course uh, the United States could be playing them. Uh, certainly uh, a promise from the United States about some sort of military support in Ambar. Um, will have to be uh, uh, aired out soon to have any authenticity, but uh, it seems to make sense to me and therefore I'm reporting it as such. So, 
back to the future, United States ground troops uh, inevitably heading to Iraq. I'm a useful idiot, don't you be one too.